Right, and um, when we started thinking about this uh, competition, um, we were told also that it was about uh, the traditions of gin. Um, but originally it came from uh, Geneva in Holland, which is the Dutch word for Juniper. Um, and also the Sloan's also is made in Holland as well. Um, named after Hans Sloan, which is um, a really interesting guy who actually founded the Natural History Museum with his uh, botanical collection when he died, when he donated it. Um, on that, I wanted to do something botanical with it myself, so I've infused uh, the gin itself with jasmine, um, which I think is a really nice flavour that goes with, uh, goes with everything. But there's no real kind of floral elements in the gin that's uh, botanicals itself, so I thought I'd add it myself, which is here. Yeah. 37 and a half um, of the jasmine gin. Obviously, I've been for two here, so I'll be doubling up. Shaking, shaking. Shaking, shaking. Shaking, Also, something that goes well um, with this, I thought, Aperol. It's a nice dry flavour that goes nicely with gin from Italy. Um, I'm just going to use 10 mils of this. Um, Aperol's actually owned by Campari, which I didn't realise. Uh, thing, but I thought they were uh, um, enemies of each other, but it turns out it's not. Um, you get lovely notes of bitter orange and rhubarb from the, from the Aperol. Um, which I think works really nicely. And to go along with that, um, I've made a grapefruit syrup at home, um, just like a normal garden with fresh grapefruit juice, and then added the sugar to it. Um, grapefruit was actually a hybrid fruit, and the father of the grapefruit is the orange, the other one, the mother's of the pomelo. I don't know which way around that, grape, actually. But probably the pomelo would be big, because it's an issue. Um, so with a bit of orange from the uh, Aperol, I thought it'd be a, it's a nice combination with the bitterness of the grapefruit. Um, we've got some maraschino, just wanted a bit of stone fruits, um, a more kind of uh, stone fruit element, just 10 mils of that for the two, so just five for one. And then 25 mils of Sicilian lemons. Where's my there it is. Side check? Ages. Ages, that's the word. Perfect. It's random facts on there. Uh, Hans Sloan invented drinking chocolate. How cool is that? I uh, went to Jamaica and they all drank um, uh, chocolate with water, which he said was a disastrous drink, and combined it with, water, uh, with milk and uh, came back, sold it to Cadbury's, and they sold Sloan's drinking chocolate for 200 years. There you go, good random fact. <laughs> Also in Holland, they used to employ a guy called the Sniffer, who used to, uh, <laughs> with juniper jugs, he used to sniff them when they come back to make sure that they weren't soiled. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> Not a little crap fact. Anyway, uh, so it's <laughs> 25 mils of, uh, of fresh lemon juice for each one. Um, the name of this drink is Hans Own Bathtub. Um, being a bathtub to um, things that have been used a lot to make gin. The court of the households in the 1720s was making gin themselves in London. Um, so I wanted to stick with that kind of tradition, so they've been served in bathtubs. Like you do. No, not real words. No. And it, I've, taken, I've put the plug in as well, so it's, it, it's not going to leak, it's a plug in it. <laughs> um, Doll's House. Cool. And then just to garnish it, I'm just going to use a little bit of the uh, fresh jasmine petals that I infused the gym with originally. And there it is, that's my uh, traditional set. Traditional twisted tradition. <laughs>